Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Restoration Shaman Guide for Raid Healing in Season 1 of The War Within. In this video, we're gonna be covering all the skills, hero talents, specs, rotation, and everything you need to know in order to heal in the raid. And before we start, if you want to support the channel and the content creation, please find the links below to my Patreon page and my YouTube subscriptions, which will add some extra perks for you and help me immensely. Now let's get started with the hero talents. You can definitely play both hero talents in raid, but Totemic has a slight edge over Farseer and it's much easier to play. I have a separate video going into detail why one is better than the other, feel free to watch that, but in raid the Farseer chaotic healing is indeed inferior to the automatic cast of chain heal by your Totemic spec. So long story short, if you want you can make Farseer work, but in this guide we'll be just focusing on the Totemic. The core of the main spells that you're going to be casting in the raid is pretty simple, there's only two of them. The first one is called Riptide, extremely efficient instant heal that leaves a hot on the target. It has a very short cooldown and you're going to have two stacks of it. And even more so, once you cast it, you get stacks of Tidal Waves which buff the next spell that you're going to be casting. In the raid, there's only one option for that and it's called Chain Heal. This thing heals for a lot, it's buffed by some of your other talents, but of course it also costs a lot of mana. We're going to have a whole separate section talking about mana management as this is one of the main issues that Restoration Shaman has in the raid. But for now let's just mention the tier set bonus that you get this season, which buffs the effectiveness of Tidal Wave significantly and it makes the affected spells cost less mana. And that pretty much closes your main rotation. You want to be casting a Riptide which gives you two stacks of Tidal Waves which then you consume with Chain Heals, then you cast another Riptide to get two more stacks of Tidal Waves and then two more Chain Heals and so on. Of course there are exceptions and there's other skills that you want to squeeze in between, we're gonna be talking about those next, but first let's mention the Deluge talent. Your Chain Heals are gonna be healing for more if your target is affected by a Riptide or they're in your healing rain. And that's a bit of an advanced tip, but because of this talent you want to be targeting people with your Riptide on them or standing in your healing rain. And speaking about healing rain... As a Restoration Shaman you have a whole bunch of buttons that you need to be pressing as soon as they're off of cooldown. The main one is called Healing Rain, but if you're playing Totemic Restoration Shaman, which you should be, this spell is actually replaced by your Surging Totem, which is instant cast, and your talents are going to reduce the cooldown to 24 seconds, which happens to be the duration, so you can have this out and healing your raid the whole time. Unfortunately, that also means that you'll probably have to run a talent called Totemic Projection, which allows you to move your active totems to a new location. 24 seconds is a lot of time, so unfortunately you probably have to find a binding for this button and actually use it. You also have to press the Surging Totem button again shortly after you drop it, as it turns into Downpour. That heals 5 targets in your healing rain, it gives them extra health, so it's definitely something that you want to take advantage of. Let's also mention the Totemic Capstone talent here, it's called Whirling Elements. It gives you 3 buffs, 2 of them you're going to automatically consume by your Chain Heal casts, but the first one basically makes your next healing wave for Healing Surge do double healing. So long story short, after you drop your Surging Totem, you want to throw a healing wave, let's say to your tank or somebody else that needs it, so you take advantage of this buff, but more importantly you also be conserving a little bit of mana by casting the healing wave instead of Chain Heal. On top of the Surging Totem, you should also be casting the Earthen Wall Totem on cooldown. This one absorbs damage from each attack that everyone standing inside of its circle takes, and it's particularly efficient if you have everybody stacked and standing inside during pulsing AoE damage. You can try to time it for specific mechanics, but in raid everybody is taking some kind of damage all the time, so using it on cooldown is also a good approach. And the value that it brings is so big that you should actually use it in combination with your Totemic Reco, which will reset the cooldown and allow you to drop another Earthen Wall Totem right on top of the first one. This is a huge combo and you can reduce the cooldown of Totemic Recall down to 2 minutes, which means that every other time you can drop 2 Earthen Wall Totems on top of each other. Just try it out and you'll be surprised how much healing it actually does. Let's also mention Nature Swiftness in this section. 
It makes your next hero instant cast and it also makes it cost no mana, which means that you should be combining this with your most expensive chain hero every time you can. And last but not least, you should be keeping Earth Shield on yourself and on your tank at all times. It will do some healing, maybe not a lot, but it will definitely help you survive. So you can think of that as defensive. And of course, don't forget to keep the Water Shield and Earth Living Weapon buffs on yourself. You don't have to recast those, but you need to use them before the start of the raid. And then once per hour. Now we're not done yet, the next important spell that you need to press on cooldown is called Unleash Life. This one is a small instacast heal, but it buffs significantly the next spell that you cast. And the obvious question is, what do you combine it with? The best answer is Healing Rain, because Healing Rain now does even more healing because of your surging totem. However, the cooldowns do not align that well, so your other very good option is obviously the chain heal. So long story short here, try to use it with your healing rain, if you cannot, use it with your chain heal, but definitely do not use it with any of the other spells that are listed in the tooltip. The everlasting question for shamans, should you be using Cloudburst Totem or Healing Stream Totem? The Cloudburst stores some of your healing after you drop it and then it bursts to heal your allies while the Healing Stream once dropped starts to heal an ally and it will keep going until it expires. The first thing to mention here is that Totemi has a talent called Reactivity which right now is broken and bugged. The tooltip says that your Healing Stream Totem is going to heal a second target for 50% effectiveness but in fact it's actually healing it for 100% essentially making the Totem do double healing. On top of that, it's also going to cast a free chain here once you drop it because of the other talents that you're using as totemic. So that makes it extremely powerful and a lot of shamans actually opt to use that in raids. Because it's very easy to use and it does a ton of healing. At the same time, Cloudburst totem requires much more skill, precision and timing to play correctly and get value out of making the gameplay much more complicated, so my advice to you is, as of right now, just play Healing Stream Totem. You have two charges, you can drop them anytime the rate is taking damage, and they'll do a lot of passive healing and bring a lot of value to you and to the rate in general. Now, if you ask the question, can Cloudburst do more healing than Healing Stream Totem, the answer is yes. However, extracting that value is much harder than playing the Healing Stream Totem, and if you misuse or mistime your Cloudburst Totems, they're going to do significantly less healing than the Healing Stream. So at the end of the day, I will say use the Cloudburst only if you're really confident and you know how to use it, and if you want to get constant value, just fall back to the Healing Stream Totem. I have a whole separate video on this topic alone, so feel free to watch that if you're interested, but now we have one more choice note to talk about. There's another important talent choice note which will make you pick between Deeply Rooted Elements and Wellspring. Now you can definitely play both with Deeply Rooted Elements giving you a chance to proc Ascendance every time you cast a Riptide, which is basically all the time. So you will get a lot of value out of this talent, especially because it's passive and there is no extra button that you need to press, the downside of course being that the procs are relatively random. At the same time, Wellspring gives you a lot more control because that's a frontal that heals everybody and you can press it every 20 seconds, but of course it comes at the cost of being an extra button, an extra keybind that you need to worry about. On most fights you can squeeze out a little bit more out of Wellspring, but the numbers are relatively close, especially if you get lucky and you get a lot of DRE procs. So my advice here is that this is a personal preference. If you want to take the easy route, take deeply rooted elements, and if you want to spice things up a little bit, you can pick Wellspring. At the end of the day, you're going to get more value out of the talent that you feel more comfortable to play with. Alright, let's summarize everything we've said so far into your main healing rotation. First, you want to use your Unleash Life on cooldown and you want to combine it with your healing rain and if that's not available, a chain heal. If your Surging Totem comes off of cooldown and your Unleashed Life is not available, you press that button and don't forget to follow up with the Downpour, which becomes available once you cast it. Another button to press on cooldown is the Earthen Wall Totem and if you have Totemic Recall available, you press that and you drop two at the same time 
And after all of those are on cooldown, you get to press some healing spells. And first you should try to put your healing stream totem, your wellspring and your nature swiftness on cooldown as well. And once you do that, you revert back to casting riptides and then consuming your tidal wave stacks with chain heals. I didn't mention this in the list, but if you have a little bit of a downtime, you can renew the earth shield on yourself or on your tank. And if you think that's a lot of buttons, we still need to talk about cooldowns. Your big healing buttons will probably be assigned if you play in an organized raid and you'll be told when to press them, but if you're pugging, here are some of the big healing cooldowns that you can use. Ascendance is a burst of healing followed by 15 seconds in which you duplicate 70% of your healing. And the cooldown is reduced down to 2 minutes with some of the talents that you're using, so that's a very powerful button, but once you press it, you need to be pressing more buttons after that to follow up in order to get value out of this duplicate healing. If you do no healing, you get no value. That's not the case for healing tight totem, which you drop and it starts healing for 10 seconds after that. You can reduce the cooldown to this one down to 2 minutes as well. So that's another huge contributor to your HPS overall. And then you have His Majesty the Spirit Link Totem, which now not only saves people at low health and provides damage reduction to the whole raid, but now it also does a little bit of healing due to the Sprouting Spirit's talent. The price for that is 3 minute cooldown, but you can use that at least 2 times in every fight. Let's also mention here Ancestral Guidance. This is basically a very weak version of Ascendance with a 2 minute cooldown, as it got some pretty huge nerfs recently. So it's probably not even going to get assigned as a cooldown in an organized raid. But it does provide you with 10% more healing for 10 seconds, so just don't forget to press it, as it's not a lot, but it's free value on top of what you're already doing, so take advantage of it. I don't know how all of this sounds to you, but let me tell you, it's very expensive when it comes to mana management. Running low on mana is going to be your main problem, especially on some of the longer fights. So here are some tips on what you can do to handle that problem. First, make sure to use your mana tight totem. Not only that, but use it as soon as you can once the fight starts. It's a 3 minute cooldown, so you want to use it as many times as you can during the fight. And the faster you get this cooldown rolling, the sooner you're going to get to press it again. Your other big resource is your mana potion. The cooldown for that is 5 minutes, but if you press it early, you're most likely going to get to use at least 2 in the fight. So the same thing as the mana tight totem, use it as soon as you can, so you can use one later on as well. And then use all the help that you can get, ask for innervates, ask for the evoker source of magic, ask for other mana tight totems. And of course, try to play smart and use tricks like casting the healing wave to get the value out of the whirling elements buff of the surging totem. Use your nature swiftness, rely more on your riptides and try not to overheal too much with the chain heals. All of that is essential and you're quickly going to learn it the hard way if you want to last through the whole fight. Now here's a build that encapsulates everything we've talked about so far. You can copy it from the description of this video as well. But let me make a few notes of the choices that I've made and what you can actually change to make this more suitable to the content that you're playing in and of course your gameplay style. First, I haven't picked Ancestral Viger, which is a talent giving you 10% more HP to the primary targets of your heal, specifically Chain Heal. And that's more of a personal preference as this is a very good talent, 10% HP is very good, but I don't think I get much value out of it and I don't think it brings a lot to the table while we're progressing in Heroic as having a little bit more health is not going to be the main factor of whether or not you're going to die there. And I'll probably pick this back up once we start progressing Mythic, not to mention the downpour also gives you 10% increased HP, but for now it is what it is. Next, I picked up a couple of Riptide talents along with a talent that gives you a second charge of that spell. And that's another personal preference as I think I get a lot of value using that spell, but if you're not good with the Riptides, you can actually invest those points into talents that let's say buff your healing rain. If you're better with that spell, you get more value out of the talents and my advice here is experiment a little bit and see what works better for you. 
I've even seen shamans that run without resurgence, which is the talent that gives you mana back based on your critical strikes. And to me that's wild, but if you don't have mana problems or you get all the innervates on the world, you definitely don't need that point. And you can even go as far as dropping both Wellspring and Deeply Rooted Elements to save a point from there if you think you're not getting enough value out of that capstone talent. At the end, again, use that as a starting point and experiment to find what works best for you. Last but not least, let's talk about stats. Obviously, you want to focus on intellect and main stat or item level, call it whatever you'd like. And your best secondary stat is no doubt critical strike, as it makes you heal for more and it gives you mana back, which is exactly what you want. Now, most guides are going to tell you that your next best stat is versatility and they would be right. You scale pretty good with that stat, it makes you heal for more and it also gives you damage reduction, which is always welcome. However, I'm going to put mastery on the same level. That stat makes you heal people for more based on the help that they're missing. Often you'll be told to avoid it because you won't get much value out of it if you're healing people which are relatively high in their health bars. However, you get much more value out of the mastery compared to versatility if you're healing somebody who's really low. So I'm going to argue that you get more value out of the mastery compared to the versatility, specifically when you're doing progression and early in the season. So long story short, if you give me a choice between two items, the first one having crit and verse and the second one having crit and mastery, I'll choose the second one. So that's a stat that you definitely don't want to avoid in the raid, but you definitely want to avoid the haste as that brings you almost no value. Most of your spells are either instant or they'll be very quick cast because of the Tidal Waves buffs and the Tidebringer as well when it comes to Chain Heal. So the only thing that Haste can help you with is running out of mana quicker. So that will be all for the Raid Healing Guide for Restoration Shaman in Season 1 of The War Within. I also have a full guide for how to play Restoration Shaman in Mythic Plus. Check this out if you'd like. Please check the links below if you want to support the channel. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Now get out of here.